Good evening and welcome to Private Properties Podcast. I'm your host, SD Klassen, filling in for Zama Kumalo. Tonight we're speaking how COVID has actually affected the rental market. We all know that COVID-19 has affected us, those around us. People have lost jobs. It has also affected the rental market, as mentioned. So tonight we speak to Yoet Smuts from PayProp, also the head of data and analytics. Hi, Yoet. How are you? Hi, SD. Thanks for having me. I'm good. That's good. Thank you so much for being here. As I mentioned before, COVID, the pandemic has really been stressful on all of us. Um, during this time, it's been so difficult. So, which leads me to my first question. We'd love to know how it actually affected the rental market in South Africa. Yeah, so there were a few factors that affected the supply and demand for rentals, and those had a knock-on effect on rental levels, rental growth rates, and obviously arrears. So I think I'm going to talk about them, and then and then we'll get to the answer. So first, and the, and the most obvious one, I think, was income. Many consumers who are tenants lost either all their income or part of their income. They weren't able to work um, during the first few months of lockdown, at least. So that meant that many tenants were perhaps not able to afford their rent, either in full or partially, so arrears spiked. And we saw that in both looking at the percentage of tenants in arrears, as well as the average size of arrears. Then another effect of the tenant income and affordability, it meant that tenants weren't able to afford or they don't have an appetite to rent more expensive properties, or they might even struggle to pay their normal rent increase. So that means that that low demand um, puts downward pressure on, on rental levels. And that means that the growth rates are quite low. On the supply side, because of the travel bans, a lot of Airbnb properties or other properties um, that stay for short-term rentals came back onto the long rental market. So that effectively caused an oversupply of rental properties and that puts further downward pressure on prices. But I think one of the most um, drastic changes that we've seen is the way in which estate agents do business. They were forced to work online and they now work basically in a digital world. And were, were they able to, to move to the online platform because was it easy for estate agents to actually move that way or was it difficult? Well, they were forced to, so they had to make it work, right? So it really depends on, on what systems and technologies you have been using before. And that would, that would then um, tell or that would affect how easily your transition to basically pure online would have been. Right. And you briefly spoke about travel bans. And when the whole lockdown happened in March, it was a big shock to all of us. So with all these travel bans happening and contingency plans that we see in other countries may not be in Africa at all put in place, what kind of contingency plans do you think that our government put in place for landlords, tenants, or even agencies in general? So in short, our government didn't put any contingencies in place, really. The only regulation that affected landlords and tenants um, was the tenants couldn't be evicted during lockdown. So some banks and other credit providers actually put relief in place. They gave uh, landlords payment holidays on their bonds. And we saw that a lot of landlords passed those on to their tenants, which was great. Right, because I was reading an article earlier by Property Wheel where it stated that 37% of tenants couldn't afford to pay rent and 22% did not pay at all. So just according to the stats that you know, you know, data and analytics, um, these numbers are, they could be true, they could be false. But from the article that I read, these stats show that 22% really couldn't pay at all. How did that affect you as well as the rental market? So yeah, we saw we saw um, the same type of trends in in our um, arrears analysis. We saw, like I said, an increase in the percentage of tenants in arrears as well as the size of arrears. So that was up to June. In June and July and August, we actually saw those figures um, going to the better side for a change. So they, um, the arrears position for a lot of our clients actually improved over the last two months. They're not at levels where they were before lockdown, obviously, um, but we're hoping that they would get there. Right, and these were obviously some of the challenges and implications that you faced. Are there any other challenges, um, again, during COVID that you faced that maybe we should know about? 
Yeah, so I think not us but our clients our clients are mostly rental agents and they still have the same problems that they had before and i think it's just a bit more um uh, visible now so for example getting tenants to pay their arrears um they were always tenants in arrears they are now just more tenants in arrears so that is a challenge that's a bit bigger now um a big one i think that's often overlooked is managing a landlord's expectation so if you're a rental agent, the landlord is your client, right? And if they are used to getting a certain rental increase through every year or always having a tenant in, you now have to tell them that, you know, you might not get that same um, percentage rental increase or we might have more difficulty finding a tenant for you. So so that's a big one. Um, and I think right. one of Sorry, continue your head, sorry. One of the new ones that we saw was that agents now had to be a middleman between tenants and, and landlords, um, especially around reaching payment agreements. So um, if a tenant really couldn't afford their rent, they had to organize with the landlord for rent relief or deferred rent. The agent is now in the middle and they must make sure that they firstly correct the right rental amounts at the right times. We also saw that many tenants used the damage deposits to pay rent, obviously with the um, landlord's permission, but that's also something that had to be facilitated. Must that now be topped up? Um, and yeah, all that admin now fell on our rental agents. Right, and slowly moving into, because this has been going on through COVID and you kept mentioning arrears, which was an issue before as well as during and probably will be an issue in the future to come, which leads me to my next question. What other implications can we, or challenges will we face after COVID? Has COVID left such a bad scar on the rental market? Um, or do you think that we can overcome this? Yeah, so we can overcome anything. I think the, the variable there is time that we have to consider. Um, going forward, I think the biggest challenge will, will stay finding a good tenant. So I spoke about, um, the oversupply earlier, agencies are now competing for good tenants because many tenants took a financial hit and they their finances aren't in the same position that it was before. Um, and because there's an oversupply, uh, tenant now has more negotiation power um, to negotiate a lower price. And I just spoke about um, damage deposits being used to pay rent in many cases one of the challenges will be to find a tenant with the ability to pay a damaged deposit because if they now use it to pay their rent and they've obviously used all of their savings they might just not be able to afford it so now your job as a rental agent becomes having a conversation with your landlord asking what risk is the bigger risk is the risk of potential damage to my property if i don't have a damaged deposit the bigger risk is an empty property a bigger risk is a bad tenant a bigger risk and there really isn't a, an answer it depends um, on the situation right so like you said we'll overcome all of this and <clears throat> this also leads me to what you said earlier you said something about airbnb starting long-term rentals and this was obviously a positive thing during COVID. Yes, it was bad that we had the travel bans and people couldn't travel outside, but it was actually a positive thing on the rental market with Airbnb taking over. So what other positive trends did you see in the rental market besides your Airbnb and long-term yeah. long rentals? So I think that that really depends on, on what, there's always two sides of the coin, right? Um, but other trends that we're seeing um, from a consumer side or tenant side, now that the interest rates have been lowered so much, it's possible that many tenants who are able to afford their rent are now buying properties. So your best tenants might actually be leaving the tenant pool altogether. Um, other than that, now that more people are working from home, which is probably something that's going to stay, um, tenants, families who's renting might be looking for different features in a property. So they might, instead of staying close to work, now decide to move further away into the suburbs. Um, they might need a property with an office space or space for their kids to do homework, um, faster internet. So these type of trends is, I think, what we can expect when it comes to properties and location. 
And then from a business side, I think what's here to stay is the reliance on technology. That is definitely going to stay. People are now forced to adapt. And now that they have, they have seen that it can be done. Um, so it comes with that, it comes a lot of challenges, but also a lot of opportunity. Right. So I, I, I completely agree that, um, yes, during COVID, we, some of us might have been forced into using technology and using different platforms, but technology is there and it's there for us to use. And I just want to, before we go to an ad break, I'd like to ask about, are there any negative trends that you maybe saw besides the rental in arrears? Because we like to talk about the positive trends and yes, um, it is an amazing thing, but some negative trends during COVID and maybe some negative trends which you believe might stay with us post-COVID. Yes, so arrears is definitely one. We've seen an increase in arrears and it's going to be here to stay. Um, there was a massive increase, I read a survey recently, something like 700% increase in uh, certain types of online fraud. So that might be taken advantage of. And obviously, if people move to work from home more permanently, with that brings a whole bunch of business risks. Um, if you're a, a principal or a business owner, that's definitely here to stay, yes. Yes, so just before we go, we'll speak more about the online fraud and using technology because as we said, there are negative things to this technology thing and it does benefit us and it saves time and makes things really simple. But on the topic of trends, as we go to our advert, we'd like the viewers to comment in the comment section. Do you think that COVID will have a negative or a positive impact on us going forward? Comment yes, if you do believe that it will be positive and comment no, if you think that it will have a negative effect on the rental market. Stay tuned. Welcome back. I hope that you commented your thoughts. Do you think that the rental market will be positive after COVID or negative? Don't forget, comment yes if you think it's positive and comment no if you think it's negative. We're still chilling with Yohet Smuts. Welcome back, Yohet. Just before the break, we spoke about the rental market and the effects that COVID-19 had on it. We're going to move a little bit, little bit more to the technological side of this. And as we mentioned before, you're from Payprop and you're head of data and analytics. Right, so we're gonna come back quickly and we touched on certain things and I'd like for you us to move, as I said, to technology. And how do you think technology has benefited the property industry? Yeah, so there are, I mean, many, many examples. Um, I think the main advantage of property, of technology in the property sector is that people can take advantage of it. Um, the technology is there for them to, automate the, mon the mundane parts of their job so that they can use the time that they save to do other things that increase their revenue in short. So, I mean, a few pointers on that would be to firstly make use of the best technology possible. Um, I know people often look at, at cost and not at necessarily the best one, but the cheapest one, but people often forget to look at the opportunity cost. So something might save you money in this, in the, in the, uh, if you look at the rand amount, but it costs you hours and hours of your time. So what is your time worth? That is the opportunity cost that you have to look at. I mean, you're not going to buy a TAS and expect it to look and feel like a Rolls Royce. And the same is true with, with technology. You get what you pay for. 
Right, so take advantage of technology and not only just any technology, good technology, know what we're getting ourselves into. And like you said earlier before the break that some of us were forced to use different platforms, um, especially in with regards to uh, property and technology, which again leads me to my next question. And it's about what you do, you know, please introduce us to your platform, PayProp. So PayProp is a transactional platform. It facilitates secure payments and we'll touch again on security, but it facilitates secure payments for rental agents. So it's from receiving your rent from the tenant to reconciling that and making your payments to the landlord, paying yourself your commission, um, paying any contractors that has to be paid. But the magic of PayProp is in its ability to automate most things. So from your reconciliations, from your payments, from your invoicing, sending statements to tenants and landlords, once you set them up, you can literally leave them and then the system does the rest. So, of course, rental agents don't only make payments. Um, they have many more responsibilities. So our system also offers a whole range of additional features. So you, from doing credit checks to managing damage deposits in the system to an owner app that gives landlords visibility on their properties. Right, and I think a lot of us want things to be done easy and simpler, you know. And how easy is it to use PayProp? So once you become a client, you go through a heavy compliance process, as it should be. You are working with other people's money, and we need to make sure that we also do our part to make sure that, that we deal with the right people, with the right um, licensing to, to actually handle rental money. Um, but from there, I mean, once you set up, you are good to go. Um, yeah, everything is online and um, in the cloud. So it really, it's not like you have to download software or have to be in the office. Um, yeah, it really is very, very user friendly. I'm so happy that you said, you know, we're handling money and people are quite scared when it comes to, to money, to putting money or doing anything online, especially in regards to money. And you said your biggest clients have obviously been the rental agencies, collecting the rent, using your platform. How beneficial was it as soon as we hit COVID, everyone had to work from home? How beneficial was PayProp for these rental agencies? Yeah, so like I said, we are cloud-based. And because of that, our clients are really able to like seamlessly move to a work from from an office environment to a work from home, home environment without any um, interruptions. And the beauty of it is, is it that we didn't even have to change anything on our side. We already had all the building blocks in place. Our system operates like that always. So whether you are running your rental book from a yacht in the Bahamas or from your living room, it really is the same. You can approve your payments, do your credit checks, send reminders, um, set up permissions, look at what your employees are doing. You can access documents that you uploaded. You can really do everything that you would do from your office, from your home with paper. Right, because I know back in the day, a lot of agents had to find documents in the office and they're scrambling around looking for documents and things like this. But as you say, your platform can hold all of this on one app, basically. Yes, basically. Yeah, so this again leads me to my next question. It seems so easy to do. And with that being said, everything, also the transition to move to technology, you had no problem with that. People using PayProp had absolutely no issue with it. They've been using it. So it was really comfortable to, for them to make that transition, um, going home and working from home. But they, they, there must be risks involved with using technology and using your platform. Are there any risks involved? <laughs> Yes and no. So there's definitely risks involved with PropTech in general. Um, and especially when you transition from an office space to a work from home space. So you must make sure that, that your security is in place, right? Cybersecurity, um, fraud risk, all of those things. Um, like I said, there's been a massive increase in online um, fraud and cybercrime um, of up to like 700%. So these are things that you must must keep in mind and, and often business owners don't, they, they don't understand the extent of it. So they don't really focus on it. It's kind of like a ignorance is bliss type of situation. Um, it, and it's difficult for small businesses to, 
to stay on top of trends and to know what new security measures there are that they must um, implement. So that's one of the benefits of PayProp is that we do that for you. Right, so there are obviously risks, risks involved, as you've mentioned, but I think, like you said, ignorance is bliss. A lot of us just go on these apps and just start doing everything immediately without even thinking about um, your own security and the whole cyber security and the fraud because you're handling such a large amount of money, right? And you've mentioned some of the things that you take into consideration to protect this money. Um, are there any like, so obviously scams and fraud take place. Have you witnessed anything like this in the past? So yes, we um, we unfortunately some of our clients fall prey to to things like that from time to time, but for the system as a whole, we we really go the extra mile to make sure that it doesn't happen within our system. Right, and you have like you said your contingencies in plan in place to take care of this when it does happen. Again, my next question were what are the safety measures that you have in place? So let me answer that from like three different points of view. So firstly, from this, for the system as a whole, right? So we're an international company. Our security is um, centralized. But for the system as a whole, we cover everything from web application security. We make sure that we use secure data storage. Um, we make sure that our data is encrypted. We have multiple backups, uh, really. We are a bit extra. We have three backups um, of the actual system just in case something bad happens. We do many internal security audits to make sure that we really comply with the highest of standards. And we also do a security audit by an external company annually for the same reason. Then from our client's perspective, we make sure that we have um, password security standards. We use OTPs for some of the settings um, in the system. And then lastly, to protect our customers from themselves, to protect them internally, we enable them to set up their own permissions for the employees. So they can definitely make sure that duties are segregated, that the same person can't set up a payment and approve a payment. And one of the other right. things... Mm -hmm. One of your coolest things, I was just about to say that a lot of what you've mentioned might be gibberish to our viewers out there or those who do not know anything about technology, but I guess in essence, it's really just safe. But you were saying one of your last coolest um, measure that you have in place. Yes, is that we really pride ourselves on being very transparent. So if you're a business owner, you can literally see every single thing that's ever been done on your account by anyone on an audit log. That's amazing. I think if more platforms were so transparent, we won't be so scared to use them, you know. And on this topic of talking technology and maybe some gibberish to some of our viewers, what or how do you fundamentally see that technology is actually benefiting the property sector? So it's definitely changing the property sector in a good way, but I think it's taking away human error and that that human aspect of you know um maybe someone wants to dig into a bit of money because they had access to a bank account now you can really make it a bit more difficult for them or maybe someone spent three weeks out of the month doing uh, reconciling payments and now it can take them a day so from a time perspective and a human error perspective there really are massive benefits Right. And whenever I think about technology, my biggest fear is how does the older generation adapt? You know, do we just forget about them and just use technology for the because technology is really just for the younger generation. And a lot of the times, I mean, in my own personal home, I would have to help um, the my gran and figure out certain apps or certain technologies. How are you still using our, our older generations for using your platform? Yes, so the average rental agent is over 50 years old. So okay. user base are definitely not your millennials or your Gen Zers. And I think the, the secret to that is just keeping it simple. So making it intuitive and simple and easy to use, but still very powerful. That is, I think, our secret. And I think, like you said earlier, being completely transparent with your client, with anyone using your platform, which is really amazing. Do you have 
any advice maybe for not even the older gen for, for millennials using your platform? Because you've said it's so transparent, so we, we can all understand it. But going forward, if I'd like to use your platform, you've mentioned how easy it is to use and the safety measures you put in, in place. Do you have any advice for me if I'd like to use your platform? So advice to rental agents in general, yes, yes. make sure that you use not the cheapest, but the best technology. Use technology that can, that can improve your service to your client, to your landlord and to your tenant because they are prospective buyers in the future. If you're a landlord or a tenant, make sure that you use a rental agent who actually use technology and use the best technology and know how it works. Right. So I think, thank you so much, Joet. That's really absolutely amazing advice. And I think being maybe a new property entrepreneur, finding out these things from your rental agent is extremely important. You know, asking them what um, technology they're using, asking them how it will benefit me as a tenant. And also having an open communication with your landlord as well. What technologies are they using? for yeah. me to go forward and to know that my process is going to be 100% transparent, as you say. Yes, and safe. And safe, exactly. Safe is key. Because we do yeah. know with technology comes all sorts of risks, but if we're using the correct platform, like you said, we'll be safe at the end of the day. So thank you so much, Joet. I think we're out of time. And I'd like to say thank you for being on the show and talking to us about how COVID has affected the rental market. We've learned a bit more this evening about how that's happened. And we've also seen how technology benefits us in the sector, in the property sector. So Joet, just before you go, we've asked our viewers to say yes or no, if it's a negative or positive impact, what is your answer to that? Oh, again, time could, could really change things, but in the short term, I think COVID definitely affected the rental market in a negative way, especially if you're a rental agent, because if arrears are going up, your rental growth is slow, your commission income is lower, unfortunately. Um, does it bring good change permanently? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, so, so in essence, it's a yes from you, Yoet. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. See you guys tomorrow. And same place, same time. And I've been Esti Klassen, and we've had Yoet Smuts this evening. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jared Siegel. I'm a local restaurateur and the owner of Jared's Espresso Bar and Eatery in Seapoint. I'm a Cape Town local, Camps Bay born and bred, and I've been living in Sydney, Australia for the last few years. Living abroad, I've always been drawn to the mother city and I've recently decided to come back home. Taking lifestyle factors into consideration, Bantry Bay has been the perfect fit for me. Living on the Atlantic seaboard really resonates with what I'm all about. From the active lifestyle, the amazing food culture, its family-friendly environment and amazing natural beauty, the quality of life we have on offer is really unique. The Atlantic Seaboard has some of the most beautiful suburbs in the country. With areas like Camps Bay and its world-renowned beach culture and the recent refurbishment of Seapoint Promenade, it's no wonder our neighbourhood has such a global appeal. After a long day of hard work, there's nothing better than taking a walk along Clifton Beach, sharing a moment and watching the sunset.
trying to offer something authentic to the community. I'm not about reinventing the wheel, just doing the classics really well. And this is my neighborhood.